Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II, World at War. It is September of 1940, France has fallen to the Germans, Vichy France has been established, and the Free French Forces in Exile have started to be set up, have uh, just begun to be set up. The FNLF uh, Le Trump light cruiser is available to us in French or in British waters, seized and given to the Free French. Uh, but the rest of the French colonies, at least in Europe, uh, have all really sided with Vichy. Uh, there are a few African provinces uh, which have sided with the Free French, but otherwise things aren't looking great. Uh, in Ethiopia, things are looking okay. Uh, in Libya, I imagine the Africa Corps will show up shortly. Uh, and in um, China, the Chinese have been holding their own and just recently developed infantry level 1 weapons. So that's all good news. Meanwhile, in England, now that France has fallen, the question remains if the Germans will indeed launch an amphibious attack against the British. We don't know yet. We have a reasonable number of naval assets in the area, uh, although we're not at, at, at full strength. Uh, our aircraft carriers, we've got two of them. Uh, we've got several battleships, several heavy cruisers, certainly more than what the Germans can bring to bear. But they don't need to win total naval supremacy. They just need to be able to afford a beachhead and then take London, uh, and things get very dicey very quickly for the British after that. With that being said, we have done our turn, so let's go ahead and jump forward and see what the month of October has to bring for us. Germany celebrates the fall of Paris. That's to be expected. The loss of Paris impacts British national morale. British morale is shaken by French France's surrender. Germany celebrates the defeat of France, so one in the same with Paris. Prime Minister Winston Churchill. The First Lord, Sir Dudley Pound, argues that the only way to prevent the French fleet from ever being used against us is to attack and sink it in port. Some French battleships could end up in German hands should they conquer Algeria or were the Vichy authorities to join the Axis. It is therefore proposed that we launch Operation Catapult to strike at the Free French, or sorry, at the French fleet at Mers el Kaber. Uh, carrying out this attack will cost 35 MPPs, and we must be prepared for a strong diplomatic reaction from the Vichy authorities. Would you like to launch Operation Catapult to ensure that these French ships can never end up in Axis hands? Notes. The action would definitely sour relations between us and the new Vichy authorities, but the consequences of not doing so could be far worse, as the presence of the French fleet on the Axis side could possibly tip the war in the f in, uh, at sea in their favor. Maybe. I had half the French fleet uh, destroyed. Uh, if you say yes, then the French fleet at Mess El Kibir will be attacked. In response, Vichy France and Algeria will move 35 to 50 percent toward the Axis, and French bombers based in Algeria will retaliate by bombing Gibraltar. If you say no, then should Vichy Algeria join the Axis or be conquered by the Axis, then Germany will gain a strength five battleship at Casablanca and a full strength battleship at Algiers. Ew, that's a pretty strong force. We'll choose yes. Operation Catapult, the Royal Navy attacks the Vichy fleet at Mess Mer el Kaber. Admiral Darlin orders the partial mobilization of the Vichy French fleet. French bombers attack Gibraltar in response to the attack on Mer el Kaber. It is proposed that we launch an attack on Dakar in French West Africa using the Royal Marines and Free French units. Some of the gold reserves of the French, Belgian, and Polish governments are held there, and their capture could provide a substantial financial worth. If successful, General de Gaulle's prestige will increase and our economic situation could be improved by the capture of the gold reserves. Nevertheless, attacking Dakar could trigger the Vichy authorities in France and North Africa to swing 5-10% to 10 toward the Axis. Preparing an attack on Dakar, codenamed Operation Menace, will cost us 30 MPPs. Uh, would you like to launch the operation? The raid only has a 20% chance of success, but if successful, the UK will receive 200 MPPs representing the capture of the gold reserves and the British national morale will, will rise by 1,000 points. If it's unsuccessful, then Vichy France and Algeria and Tunisia will have a 20% chance of moving 5-8% to 8 toward the Axis. That's not a very high chance, I'll take that. French Pacific Colonies join the Free French. Thailand annexes colonial territory from French Indochina. Okay, they didn't actually annex that much. De Gaulle announces on the BBC that France has lost a battle, but France has not lost the war. Representatives from Poland, France, Canada, and the UK vow to continue the fight. Germany, Italy, and Japan sign the Tripartite Pact. USA develops artillery weapons level 1. India develops long-range aircraft level 1. 
Minor French allies are the Free French collect 5 MPPs. The British collect 219. The US uh, 171. Russia 70. China 206. And India 27. Why does Russia get so little money? Russia, you should have more manpower than what you currently have. I want a wall of troops. I don't have that. Japan signs the Matsuka Henry Pact with French Indochina. Okay. We haven't actually seen any. Okay. Here we are. We're finally into the Axis turn here. Interesting. Looks like the. Uh, oh, God, the Italian Navy. No! Oh, they drove my battleship away. They didn't sink it yet. The Italian Navy just attacked us off the coast of... Wait, they, they reinforced Tobruk twice? How did they do that? All right, Japanese aircraft bombing locations in China. We hit Japan pretty hard in China last turn. Ooh, hang in there, boys. Don't get destroyed. I'm going to have to swap that army. Meanwhile, Germany has begun sending troops to the border with Russia. That's concerning. Multiple German armored units here are arriving on the border. I was hoping they would wait, you know, a little bit. Okay. All right, that was a relatively quiet turn, I think. Yep. Not a ton of attacks. We did nearly lose an army in China. The British and Free French units failed to capture Docker. Fuck. USSR gets two garrisons. The intent for those garrisons really is just to ensure that Germany doesn't overrun us on the border so quickly. Also, they can act as scouts to kind of detect when things are, when shit's really about to hit the fan. So we've got garrisons mostly along the city, the border towns. We could put one at Coel, we could put one at Lapia and Sochai. Again, they're going to get wiped out real fast, but they'll, in theory, slow the Germans down. So mode, fortify, rotate, rotate that fort. And two sides is probably good, right? That'll do that. Take him 70 days, then we can build another fort here. The goal is to build a wall of forts between these Riga and here because these are so close to the German border, they're going to be attacked right away when the war does break out. Um, all right, let's take a look at China here first, I think. Question is, do we reinforce these guys to level to 100% strength, or do we swap them out with some new troops? I don't really have a lot of troops that we can just swap them out with. A level 12 army? Jesus. <sighs> Got a bad feeling that this... They may wait, actually. Their troops aren't... We'll spend the money to reinforce these guys. I'm hoping that their troops aren't ready to attack quite yet. Because they have lost a fair number of casualties. I mean, they're at 8, 6, 7. Okay, we upgraded some of these guys. Let's swap them out. I can move this unit and upgrade them at the same time. So all the troops in the northern border now have level 1 infantry weapons, and then I'll just kind of work my way down to ensure I don't forget anyone. Troops on the front can't be upgraded, unfortunately, so we'll have to kind of swap them out and add other troops in. All right, so as far south as Yichang, everybody's level one. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to attack Canton there. I can keep attacking Pakoi. Nice. 
Nice. Didn't quite finish the army off at Pakhoi, but came near. Meanwhile, the troops at Canton. Um, we'll do this. Attack with the level 1 infantry weapon troops. Weaken them and then attack with the non-level 1 infantry weapons troops and swap these guys around. Okay, so continued Chinese attacks here in the south. You know, even in the event that the Japanese went to war with the British, Hong Kong is not surrounded. Like, we're, we're doing okay there in the south. The question is, what does this army do? Do they attack th these guys straight on or not? It looks like this Japanese army actually has no supply, though, which shouldn't minimize the risk that they are, uh, that of that, should minimize the risk were they to attack. Um, yeah, we'll fall back here. So the only unit here that can be attacked is, well, actually, we'll the garrison unit there. Um, okay, so that's probably China. We've spent China's money. We're working on upgrading the Chinese army to infantry weapons before we start, you know, going massively back on reinforcements. We've got some badly battered units, though, that really need some help. I don't know what to do with these Dare to Die Special Forces guys. Um, move them here. Could start moving them north. It's probably where they're going to be needed most. That's where the most likely breakthrough is. Meanwhile, in Libya, continue to bombard the enemy there. Let's pull this battleship back. We're going to go ahead and use our carriers against the enemy fleet. Oh, there's no aircraft on that. That's a problem. All right, there are aircraft on this. All right, so we're going to go after this heavy cruiser with our bombers. Nearly destroyed it. Our sub will finish it off, hopefully. Not quite. Um... Let's see here, what do we want to do? Go after the Japanese sub that will not immediately die from attack. Heavy cruiser against the Italian Navy's heavy cruiser, so we destroyed that. Good for us. The Italian Navy takes a bit of a blow. Submarine dives from attack. All right, so the British fleet in the Middle East is going to continue besieging Tobruk. We're going to go ahead and bombard Tobruk with shells. Already bombed it. So we'll launch an attack there. All right, so I'll move these guys back, hopefully into supply. Tobruk still hasn't fallen. I don't know where their sub is moving. Oh, there it is. All right, so their sub's moving along the coast. We've got some badly battered battleships here in the Middle East. We'll have to figure out what to do with them. Maybe not quite yet. I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with my British money. British money. All right, let's try and take... Really? We can't do anything? These bad guys have no supply. Oh, they do have slight supply. They did get a little bit of supply in that turn. So, we're not going to take the city this turn. Because they have supply, because the headquarters unit was able to link up with them ever so slightly. I am taking forever in Italian East Africa. Because I suck. Oh, we got a special forces unit here. Down in the southern desert. Um... I guess we can reinforce these guys. We could use them. Uh, meanwhile, in England, 
reinforce this infantry unit here. The air units are all at full strength. We'll reinforce this core that just came back from the continent. Move this guy south here. Move these strategic bombers forward. A lot of bad weather. Let's work. Let, I mean, really, what we need to do is get back, get to work on repairing the British fleet. In the event of an invasion of the British Isles, it'll be the British fleet that is critical to us throwing them back. Um, let's, I guess, scout the channel here. So we just sent ships through the channel. Sent destroyers up to look at the ports at Bremen, the Hague, Antwerp, France at Le Havre and Cherbourg. So far we spot no enemy uh, troop transports, which is good. Probably should go check out Brest as well. Nothing there. So unless they're basing out of St. Malo, which seems unlikely, we'll send the Free French Cruiser forward. They're not. So as far as we can tell here, the Germans are not planning for an invasion this turn, which is good. I don't really want to waste my tactical bombers here. Um, we've got 33 points left, not enough to buy or research anything. I suppose we could spend it on refitting some of our Med Mediterranean boys. This battleship can get two hit points restored. I think that's going to do it for this turn. Um, the Americans don't have enough money yet to do the next level of research. The Russians, probably the same story. So let's go ahead and end the turn and move forward into November of 40. Hungary is joining the Axis Alliance. Destroyers for Bases Agreement, HMS Montgomery is commissioned. So there's our one of our first destroyers. Seventh Armored is formed in Egypt. Nice. We get some good tanks there. Romania has joined the Axis. So now the entire Soviet border is part of the Axis. George Frombry entertains the troops to raise morale. UK develops advanced fighters level 2. Very good. That's very good news. Long range aircraft level 1. USA develops advanced tanks. USSR develops advanced tanks. Advanced fighter progress. China's developing production technology level 1. Advanced tanks for India as well. So good news across the board there. Well, this, this breakout never shows me... Oh, no, it did show me China's income. I just didn't see it. Okay. You know, for all the events they have in this game, one thing I'm surprised they don't... Italy declares war in Greece, great. One of the things I'm surprised that they don't have in this game is a sense of, like, the when the Chinese flooded... I forget which territory exactly they flooded, but they flooded some, some farmland, and um, it had a horrible impact on China post-war. It devastated their economy, but it also allowed them to slow a Japanese advance uh, in central China. And I can't remember if that happens before. I don't think it happens before 1939. So I'm kind of surprised the game doesn't have that for all the other events that they do have. All right, so they're really focusing on that army that we had reinforced. Actually, no, now they're attacking to the south there. Great. Oh, they're attacking everywhere. Uh, we almost took Pakoi. We didn't manage it. All right. Meanwhile, the Germans are moving even more troops to the border with the USSR. How many goddamn troops do they have there? Holy fuck. I feel like they've got way more men than I had when I was, uh, when I was playing as the Germans. That experience boost may come back to bite me. So many army headquarters. Should we land in France to support the, our, our Soviet friends? Italian national morale increases as Italy declares war on Greece. Axis military hinders activity on 
Crete or supply on Crete. Hey, we got the uh, Greek Navy. We better, might as well use it while we have it, right? All right, so we can use it against that uh, Italian ship. Okay. The defense of Greece. Now that Greece has entered the war, we should consider reinforcing their position by sending at least one British unit to Greece. Doing so would provide a boost to their army's morale, continuing for as long as we have a British presence there, and this would increase their ability to defend the country. If the Greeks can hold out, then we can even consider building up an advance through the Balkans into southern Europe. Uh, something the Prime Minister would definitely be in favor of. Send at least one British unit uh, to assist in Greece. That is the recommendation anyway. New Zealand as a new ship. United States as a destroyer and a fighter. Um, okay. And... Yeah, so send at least one unit to Greece. I don't exactly have a lot of units to spare. Would be a lot easier if I... Uh, did. Come on, do some fucking damage. The only guys doing any damage are, are infantry. Can I send an anti-aircraft gun? Will that, that do? Alright, send the Greek cruisers. Oh no! Enemy contact! Hey, they did some damage against the Italian destroyers at least. All right, so we can't hit the cruiser because it's in a rain squall, apparently. But we can hit their uh, destroyer there. Oh, wait, that is our cruiser. That's why we can't hit it. It's our cruiser! Sir, friendly fire. All right. Let's move this cruiser over here. Destroy that Italian destroyer. Alright, can we send anything? Huh. Um, let's see if we can reduce this city here finally. If we can, then maybe we can send something. Alright, they're gonna fall next turn. this garrison. I don't know how much supply it has. Our guy has no supply. That's great. So he's stuck. He's gonna die anyway. Might as well threaten the enemy. Alright, what? I completely forgot about my South African unit that was on the way up, right? Alright, let's get him... We can't get him quite all the way there, so let's send him to Gibraltar. That should be safe from German submarine attack. Um, I don't know if that would count as a British unit either. There's no reason to hold. Other than the fact that there's fortifications here. There's no reason to hold this northern defensive line, right? Pulls from whose money pile? The British. Great. Like, there's no reason to hold up here, is there? Yugoslavia is not even at war with Greece. So I think we should start shifting troops south and defend the Isthmus just north of Athens. That would be my thought process. So that's probably what we'll do. We'll see if we can get a British unit in there or not. Um, probably should pull some of these guys back. Pull this carrier back to port. Okay. Yeah, we're going to send one British reinforcement, the First Corps, to the Mediterranean. I don't think it's likely the Germans are going to invade us this turn. I still don't see any 
troops on barges, and it's already the fall of 40. So I'm guessing an invasion of England is off the table for the moment. Um, reinforce that destroyer. Shouldn't have left that destroyer so close to shore. Hopefully it doesn't get wiped out. Okay, move this cruiser over to Southampton. Again, our navy is just all over the place. So let's hope they don't. Meanwhile, I guess what we can do to help prevent that. So we can go ahead and upgrade our aircraft here. All of our fighters to advanced fighters level 2. That should help dealing with the Germans. Should give us a edge. I don't know if they've researched level two fighters yet. I think we can upgrade our aircraft with naval weaponry too, which could be useful if we're able to d detect an enemy amphibious attack in the in the offing. Strategic bombers level up. I think infantry is already more or less at max. Oh no, we don't have. We have infantry level one now. Which apparently we didn't have before. So reinforce those troops in England. Just spent all of my British money. There it all goes. I mean, I could have sent the six armored, I guess. Uh, reinforce the aircraft on this carrier. That'll do it for the British turn, I think. Yeah. So that'll do it for the British turn here. We've got two units here at Gibraltar. One of them's going to move north. One of them's going to move to Egypt, if they can get there in a turn. I wonder if when you do the double movement thing, if you get a morale penalty. It doesn't look like the troops suffered one. <coughs> but I'm not sure. Ethiopia has almost fallen. I'm guessing it will fall next turn. They're going to lose too much experience by bringing in entirely raw troops. Meanwhile, the British troops in Malaya continue to go on. I, maybe I should pull them out of there. All right, let's move to China. Really? No damage? Well, in that case, I'm just going to pull out because there's no, no purpose in attacking since we have no chance of winning that battle. Upgrade that core's infantry weapons. This guy still has no supply, though. Come on, dude. Do some fucking damage. Upgrade. Infantry weapons. Okay. These guys can't upgrade. Let's see here. These guys were almost destroyed. They don't have infantry weapons. Level 1. Oh, nice. They can get 2 to 3. Let's do that. Really? That was... Was that two to three? I didn't even look, I guess. Alright, so we attacked these guys multiple times. And didn't achieve any real meaningful success. These guys are almost dead again. We need to reinforce these troops here. And these troops here. They're going to lose all their experience and get overrun. Maybe I should move these guys south here. Alright, what's that do for our money for China? We've got 12 points left. Reinforce those guys. Alright, so we at least weakened the Central Expeditionary Army. That was a level 12 strength unit by a few. But we've got a lot of troops that need reinforcing, it feels like. Not critical reinforcing, but it really only takes one bad turn 
You know, they could easily overrun these guys. Level 7 strength. These guys will probably get overrun this turn. Especially now that the Japanese are bringing more air units to China. Um... Still haven't spent the money to bring the South African, the rest of the South African force up to strength, but I just don't have the money to do it right now. The United States is a good deal of money, so let's see what we can spend on research. Um, we'll spend more on advanced tanks and advanced fighters. So that brings us to near our maximum research ability. Sparring and intelligence, the Soviets have 145 MPPs. Not enough to develop more of anything. Um, if we wanted to buy something for the USSR, I don't have the money for that either. So we'll have to wait on that. Um, these guys are building fortifications. Didn't we have two engineer units in Russia? No, just the one. Well, hopefully the uh, Germans or Bulgarians or whatever don't turn on the Greeks too so quickly. I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, fuck. There's so many troops there. So many troops there. All right. Um, I don't think there's any reason to leave these guys up here unless the Germans go to war with Finland. It's just a waste. Let's bring these guys down to Murmansk. Then we'll rail them to... Uh, one of these border towns, and they'll provide a inferior opponent, but someone for the Germans to kill and attack on, and maybe slow some of their movements. Same goes for Premzel. I mean, these are, they'll all die right away, but that's not the point. The point is that we can slow their advance to our front line, which allows us to avoid some of the penalties that the Soviets face on the first turn. Um, I guess the one thing we probably don't want to forget is reinforcing these guys up to 10. The uh, headquarters unit, because it's the only goddamn headquarters unit that we have right now. All right. So that being said, I think that's going to do it for this turn and this episode. We went through two turns today. Uh, we weathered the not battle of Britain and the German transfer of forces to the east and the German or the Italian invasion of Greece. We'll see if the Germans join in next turn or if we can hold out there or if it even makes sense for us to eventually deploy some British troops there. We also got the arrival of the 7th Armored uh, to the front. So that's exciting news. Uh, they will uh, get up to Tobruk and probably reduce it in the next turn. And as soon as that happens, I think the Africa Corps deploys to Libya. Um, so until next time, though, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you once again for watching. And until next time, I'm out.